Hello, welcome to Sakel, and we are still in the beginning. That's where everything still is anyway. <laughs> so, as you will have probably figured out by now. Hey, let's get started. Father, we just thank you for your word. We think it doesn't return void. We pray you open up our ears to hear our mouths speak. Give us a grace for this place, for this time, this season of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Grab you some tea, coffee, uh, and uh, let's just relax. And uh, just have a good time studying the scripture, okay? We've been talking about in the beginning. And remember, uh, I, I want to reinstate this again because I think it's important that, the, that in the beginning is not about the beginning of just something. As far as just, you know, the heavens and the earth. In the beginning represents everything. The future, the past, the present. This is part of the infinite God, the Creator. And so the scripture says, in the beginning, God. Signifying He is the Creator. The infinite one is the Creator. Signifying that everything is going through Him, by Him, of Him. We see this uh, through His voice, the ten sayings. And there was things that were created before the heaven and the earth. And in this, we see the, the parameters of living life, the fall, the redemption, the plan, everything. Uh, if you listen to one of the videos earlier about uh, the rest of God, God is not upset about man's failure as far as panicking. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Uh, <laughs> He's not, he, he already had that figured out in the plan of salvation. And we're seeing this again play out in just the individual letters. So we talked about the bet. We've talked about the, the, the resh. And now we're going to talk about the aleph. This is actually the first letter in the alphabet. And it stands for God's oneness. there it stands for God's oneness okay as a result it also stands for uh, God's mastery and it stands for the divinity it stands for the Torah is one. It also stands for Adam and Abraham. The covenant. Okay? So these are the things that, that, that this letter stands for. All right? And I apologize for the writing again. This, this, this thing is hard to write on sometimes, but you get the idea. So let's look at it. So here we see the oneness of God. They say, well, how can there be one God in a trinity? How can that happen? Well, through the, through the bet, we see the duality and plurality. Um... Here's how it works. The infinite one, the creator, his word is what creates things. The ten sayings. His word has power to it. By the way, so does yours. You create worlds with your words. You don't believe me? I hear people say, well, that's not true. All right, well, go tell your spouse you hate them and you think they're a jerk. See what kind of world you're going to create after that. <laughs> You'll create a whole new world. You might be sleeping somewhere else. Just saying. 
You create worlds of hope, hurt, forgiveness, joy, peace, okay? The infinite one, the Ain Sof, the creator, the, the, the creator of the world, he creates all kinds of things with his words because his words have authority to engrave things, okay? This is why in the beginning God created. How does he create? He speaks. John chapter 1, uh, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were made through him and by him. So here we see God speaking. You, you've heard people say um, things like... Um, your word is who you are. If you're a liar, then people know you as a liar because you, you speak lies. If you're a man of integrity, it's because you keep your word. Okay? Condescending person. Why are you condescending? Because your words are condescending. So on and so forth. And so we see, we see this parameter play out a lot with, with Creator. Now it says in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word God was God, all things were made through Him. His Word is who He is and what He does. He creates. But then we see another aspect to where His Word on, on Shavuot, He speaks on Mount Sinai to the point it's so tangible that the world becomes vague and unimpressive. So they're not only hearing it, they're seeing it. And now in the New Testament, this same word becomes flesh. Now we're not only hearing it, but we're seeing it. And when the Creator gives birth to something that becomes flesh, it becomes a son. The Bible says that God the Spirit of God came upon Mary and she conceived a child. Again, the same principle. If you put your hand over your mouth and you start talking, you feel the breath. You feel your life through your words. That's your life through words. And so it's as if God spoke in Mary's womb and said, Messiah. And this word that became flesh is now living amongst us. Matter of fact, the Bible says it's Emmanuel, God with us. His word with us. This is why Jesus is able to fulfill the Torah, the law, because he is the Torah. He is the word who becomes flesh, dwells among us. Now we see the God, the second person, if you will. But then he, Jesus says, I must go away so that the Comforter will come, the Spirit who will lead you and guide you into all truth. Because it's the very breath of God, the Spirit of God, the presence of God that is speaking that truth. Truth. It's the same principle. You know, one of these days, I, I, I'm going to die. And if these videos are still playing, or if these audios are still playing, you're going to still be hearing my breath. You'll still be hearing my breath. Even though not here in this domain, it's still my breath that was talking. And Jesus went away and he said, I'm going to send the comfort of the Holy Spirit and he will lead you and guide you into all truth. This breath of God is still talking, but now he talks to us as his sanctuary, as a place of dwelling. Okay? This is the principle of a trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
This is part of the oneness of God, though. It's not, it's not so much so that it's, okay, there's this individual, this individual, and this individual. No. It's all part of one God. His spirit, his voice, which is now seen. And who he is, is all of it. Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, who is our God, is the one God, the only God. The, the Torah is one, according to the Jew. We talked about that as part of the letter. The other thing about the Aleph is it represents that Israel is unique. And this is the thing that when we believe in, 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 in the Messiah, we become unique. It also represents Adam for what the first Adam couldn't do, the second Adam did. There was one man, the first man God created. But what this first Adam couldn't do, this second Adam did. So that others could now follow in the footsteps of what the first Adam was supposed to lead us through. See, that's, that's the principle. The Messiah didn't fall. Adam fell. But the Messiah raised us up so we could live the way we were supposed to. Then there's the other aspect of Abraham in the covenant. This promise of God to build a nation and to the Gentile that the blessings of, of Abraham through Christ would come upon us. Now the blessings we are engrafted in. Refer to another video on this. We are engrafted in to where now God is our one God. He's our one God. This is the mastery of the Creator. You know, Jesus said, I pray they be one as we are one. And what Jesus wants and what the Father, the Creator wants is us to be so one with Him that when we speak, it's His words. When we love, it's His love. When we forgive, it's His forgiveness. He wants to operate through us and flow through us and be one with us so that the world can see the Creator in us. God's oneness. The unity aspect. So much to talk about. So little time. Okay. Psalms 91 cover you. Check out the videos on Sakel. Subscribe, like, contact us. Let us know how you're liking it all. And we will talk to you soon. Have a great one.